Over the years, I've worked with thousands of investors and the biggest problem they all have is accurately calculating the intrinsic value of a company. Get intrinsic value right and it can set your portfolio up for life, but get it wrong and it's a one-way ticket to losing money. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through a step-by-step -step guide on exactly how to calculate the intrinsic value of a company and share a couple of super useful tools that can do it for you in seconds. There are actually only four steps to this process, and I know what you're thinking. That sounds too simple for discounted cash flow. Most people think of the discounted cash flow as a big spreadsheet full of numbers and complicated formulas. A lot of tutorial videos on YouTube will focus on the mathematical aspects of the discounted cash flow, or they'll tell you to blindly extract certain numbers from financial statements. I personally don't believe there's any particular benefit beyond the learning aspect of going to that level of detail. Your time and energy is much better spent understanding the business instead of getting stuck on the math. This is exactly why Charlie Munger once said, Warren often talks about these discounted cash flows, but I've never seen him do one. I have a strong suspicion that the four steps I'm about to teach you are the exact back of the napkin approach that Warren Buffett uses. Just remember that with each step, keep a consistent time horizon. I recommend three, five, or 10 years. And if you're looking at a company with huge expectations, like a hype stock, you probably need the full 10 years to allow for all of the revenue growth and for the company to become wildly profitable. Our first step is to forecast revenue. Revenue can also be called sales. It's the amount of dollars a business brings in from selling its products before any costs. There are a few options available for you to do this. The first is to extrapolate the revenue growth from the past few years and assume that it keeps going. We can find the revenue history in the company's income statement and use that to calculate how much it's grown each year and simply assume that the growth rate will continue. The second is to look at what the analysts are forecasting. Most popular stocks will have analysts covering them and they will make predictions on where they think the revenue will be in two to three years. The third is to look at the revenue segments in the business, understanding the underlying drivers behind each segment and then look at what initiatives the company has planned or what is happening more broadly from an industry point of view. You'll then get an idea of how much each segment might grow in the future. This sounds complicated and that's because it can be. This is where you actually have to do real critical thinking and deeply understand how a company's business model or an industry works. Welcome to the harsh truth about calculating intrinsic value or finding undervalued companies. You actually don't find undervalued companies in a spreadsheet. You find them by developing an understanding of a business or an industry better than the market. This is what everyone gets wrong about Warren Buffett. Yes, he follows the principles of long-term investing and yes, he finds undervalued companies, but it's actually not those things alone that makes him successful. That's like thinking that by reading 50 books a year, I will magically become a CEO. Warren Buffett is successful because of his ability to understand businesses that everyone else misunderstands. Now, that being said, we are lucky enough to live in the AI era and I will show you a trick at the end of this video to make this process a lot easier. Step two is to forecast earnings. And the easiest way to do this is simply to forecast the profit margin. The profit or earnings of a business are what we get after subtracting all the costs and expenses from the revenue. So the profit margin is just the profit as a percentage of the revenue. Again, there are a couple of different options for this and I'll start with the easiest. If the company is already profitable and established, then it's probably fairly safe to assume the profit margin in the future is similar to the one today. If you're looking at the company's income statement, you need to be looking for the net income line item to calculate the profit margin. If the company is not yet established or is losing money, then a good proxy would be to find a more established, larger company that's in the same industry. And you probably guessed the third option actually involves real critical thinking to understand the costs required to operate the business. This isn't actually as hard as it sounds because listed companies make all this information public and most industries operate in a similar way. Remember, with intrinsic value, it's always good to be conservative and just to keep things as simple as possible. Focus on the big stuff and ignore the minor details. 
Step three is to select the earnings multiple you expect the company to trade at in three, five or 10 years. This could also be called the P-E ratio and a simple way to think about the P-E ratio is the market cap or the total value of the company divided by the earnings per profit. Keep in mind that the value of a company is always based on the expectations of future earnings, not present. And so you need to choose a multiple that reflects what you think the growth prospects will be at that time. Whilst you can just use the current multiple, this is only a good idea if the company is already very established. Let me give you three easy shortcuts for the third step. The first is to simply use the average earnings multiple of the industry that the company's in. The second is to look at more established companies in the same space and at what multiples they trade at. For example, if you are valuing Shopify, you might say that in the future, they might trade at a PE ratio similar to a mature software company like Adobe. And the last option is to use this cheat sheet on the screen right now in front of you. Pause the video and take a quick screenshot. You might have already clicked that just from the first three steps, we can arrive at a valuation. However, there is one important last step, which is discounting. Discounting is important because $100 today is worth more than $100 in five years time. This is a tricky topic to get your head around, so let me explain. If I have $100 today, I can put that into a high interest savings account and get a guaranteed return of say 5%. This means $100 today is worth 105 next year and 110.5 the year after and so on. So we first discount the future value of the company by this amount, which is technically called the risk-free rate. Second, we want to account for the risk of the business. As you know, not all businesses are successful and the discount rate is a way of capturing that. A riskier business should have a higher discount rate because we are less certain about those future earnings. A typical discount rate that includes both the risk-free rate and the risk of the business could be anywhere from eight to 15%, although I would say 10% is a good starting point. Let's run through a quick example of pulling these three numbers together. Imagine we have a hypothetical electric vehicle company called Edison. We expect that in five years time, Edison will sell 10,000 cars and each car will sell for $10,000, giving us a revenue forecast of $100 million. It's hard to tell today how much it costs Edison to make their cars, but in five years time, we're gonna assume their profit margin is similar to a more established car manufacturer, which have a profit margin of 10%. Also, in five years time, we think the company will still have lots of growth left. And so from my cheat sheet earlier, we'll use a future P ratio of 50. X. This means that in five years time, we would forecast the value of the company to be $500 million. Our last step is to discount this back to today's value. We are gonna keep things simple and use a discount rate of 10%. Applying a discount rate of 10% over five years, we find the present value of Edison to be $310 million. If the current market cap of the company was less than 310 million, then it could be considered undervalued. For anyone who knows the discounted cash flows, or maybe if you're lucky enough to done an MBA, you'll notice some differences between this back of the napkin discounted cash flow and a full one. The first is that we've missed the years in between. We basically skipped to the three, five or 10 year point. And from an academic perspective, what we're actually calculating here is called the terminal value. Second, you'll notice that we're actually using earnings, not cash flow. But keep in mind in the long run, these two will converge. Now, even though the fiction example that we just went through seemed straightforward, in reality, doing those four steps for a real world company can still be quite cumbersome and time consuming. What if I told you that Simply Wall Street has not one, but two incredibly powerful tools that let you do this exact process in seconds. In fact, these tools are so powerful that you can do the entire process in reverse. Let me show you what I mean. The first is our own discounted cash flow that Simply Wall Street does every day on every listed company in the world. Unlike the example I've run through just now, this is a full blown year on year calculation that extrapolates the best available cash flow data on the company to arrive at an intrinsic value, something that would take hours and hours to do manually. 
This number makes for an incredibly powerful part of your screening process because you instantly know, just looking purely at cash flows, does this company look undervalued? And this is not a signal to rush off and buy the stock. It's a signal to say, there is some interesting potential here. Likewise, just because a stock looks overvalued on our discounted cash flow, it probably means that investors are expecting some big changes to cash flows in the future. And so you can keep that in mind when you do further research. I should also quickly point out that this same number can be used to create a stock screener, turning it into a really powerful discovery tool. I'll put a link in the description to an intrinsic value stock screener that is based on this number. Let me use Meta as an example. I'll begin by searching for Meta and navigating to the valuation section to check the discounted cash flow on Simply Wall Street. Now, we actually call it the future cash flow value here, just to make sure people are clear what this number really means. The company is looking 20% undervalued, and I think this is enough for me to want to investigate it further, which I'm going to do using narratives. Narratives allow you to really easily capture your thoughts on a stock, and narratives always have the same four steps we talked about earlier, making it really easy to forecast revenue, earnings, and a future multiple, which we will use to automatically calculate a fair value or intrinsic value for you. To do this, at the top of the company report, we are going to click to create narrative, and you can see that most of the inputs above have already been populated. Because Meta is a fairly established company, I'm just going to do a quick check on the future P ratio and the profit margin. But as I'm being conservative, I'm going to just assume that those are going to stay the same as they are in five years time. The input that I'm most interested in here is revenue. This is where I'm going to use the slider to really play with the revenue growth in five years time and get a feeling for what is required for the company to be undervalued. A good starting point is what is the market pricing in? In this case, I can see that it's 8%. This tells me that any narrative that has revenue growth beyond 8% means the company could be undervalued. Let's say I'm happy to assume that the revenue growth will continue at the historical growth rate, which is 14%. This means in five years, the company is forecast to do just over 360 billion in revenue. But how do I know if this is even feasible? This is where AI can help. I can simply ask Gemini or ChatGPT to connect the dots between today's revenue, which is 189 billion, and my five-year forecast of 360 billion. And I'm gonna ask it to answer really briefly. As with anything coming out of a large language model, this is not something to blindly trust, but it is a very useful starting point to see if this growth story can sort of make sense to me. This is, of course, where your critical thinking comes in, and I would suggest using the AI response as a starting point for further research. Once you set your fair value, Simply Wall Street tracks it for you in your watch list or portfolio. If you prefer, you can actually follow someone else's narrative, and you'll get alerts whenever the underlying assumptions change. You can even follow analyst price targets or the future cash flow value we looked at earlier. But the real power of narratives and fair value is that it completely transforms how you make decisions. It forces you to be a disciplined, unemotional investor, just like Warren Buffett. I call this the captain versus the pirate. The pirate is a bit of a gambler. They rely on their emotions to make decisions and they don't really have a plan. A pirate can get lucky, but over the long run, those poor decisions will catch up with them. Every investor starts out as a pirate, but the goal is to become a captain. The captain has a plan. They make rational decisions. They stay calm in a storm. When you use narratives and fair value to drive your decision making, you'll be making decisions like a captain. And in the long run, that will give your portfolio a much higher chance of success. Hopefully, this video has helped you get a really solid grasp on the intrinsic value calculation. And I just want to reiterate that it really isn't as hard or as scary as a lot of people think. It doesn't need to be this massive spreadsheet of projections and data. As Buffett says, back of the napkin figures should be enough because if you're looking to buy a stock, it should be obvious that it's really undervalued.
I will put links to both the tools I've shown you today in the description and the pinned comment. And the best thing is that both of these tools are entirely free to use without a credit card. And they work for every listed company in the world, not just in the US. I'd love for you to have a go at calculating the intrinsic value for some of the stocks on your watch list or portfolio. You can also take a look at some of the narratives written by our other users to see what the community consensus is. If you do end up publishing a narrative, then others can follow it. And if our editorial team likes it, we may even feature it in one of our weekly PIX emails that go out to millions of investors. Finally, if you have any questions, please ask them in the comments and I promise to personally reply to everyone.